After an absence of three years, Cardiff were once again playing first division football. Floodlighting was finally installed at Ninian Park, with the club being one of the last to have it. The season, however, was plagued by injuries, most notably Steve Gammon, who suffered a broken leg in a home game against Manchester City. With only three wins in their last nine league games, Cardiff finished in 15th position, with Derek Tapscott their leading goal scorer with 21 league goals. The 1961-62 season got off on the wrong footing when team captain Danny Malloy left following a refusal to his request for extra money. Malloy, who had made 225 appearances, was one of the club's best signings. During the season, other club favourites were to leave. Derek Sullivan with 276 league appearances going to Exeter City, followed by Graham Moore, for whom relegation threatened Chelsea, paid a record £35,000. With these departures, manager Bill Jones increasingly put his faith in younger players. Following a win over Sheffield Wednesday on the 11th of November, City lay in 7th position. However, of the 21 games that followed, the Bluebirds won only once. Even the signing of Mel Charles from Arsenal couldn't stop the rot. And on the 23rd of April, Cardiff played their final home match in the first division, beating West Ham United 3-0. Manager Bill Jones was dismissed from his duties in September 1962. Before departing, he'd purchased the legendary Ivor Olchert from Newcastle United for £18,000 and Bristol Rovers' Peter Hooper for £7,000. With this combined strike force, City were unlucky not to have returned to the First Division at the first time of asking, finishing the season in 10th position, Hooper the leading scorer with 22 goals. One of the highlights of the season was when Cardiff inflicted a 5-2 defeat of arch-rival Swansea Town on the 15th of September at Ninian Park. Old Church again looking for the space, and there goes the ball straight into it to Milne. Will making ground. Good one, too. And then Will Charles there! A beautiful goal there by Mel Charles. A lovely pass by Alec Milne. And it's Cardiff City 2. Cardiff City 2. Swansea Town 0. After 10 minutes. What a start of this attractive game. It's Peter Davies now for Swansea. Out to Barry Jones at outside right. Showing it to Stimpel and going past him. He crosses. And it's all a fine save there by Dylan and John. He's still coming through. And it's a goal. It's a goal. It's a goal there scored for Swansea by Herbie Williams. After 16 minutes play. And so it's now Cardiff City 2, Swansea Town 1. And Cardiff to kick off then. Leading by two goals to one after just 16 minutes play in this thing, first half. Cleared for Swansea there by Purcell. To Peter Davis, to Eddie Thomas, they're inside, Swansea's inside right. To Peter Davis, tackled by Baker, and it's Mel Charles there. Heading with Hughes, going forward. Oh, what a great ball play here by Mel Charles. Look at this, he's got a great chance, he shoots, and he's there! A great goal, they would never come any better than that. Good ball control, head control, and then just picks his shot and fires a corker of a shot into the net. So it's Cardiff 3, Swansea Town 1. And Harry Griffiths intercepts for Swansea, puts it forward again to the head of Rankmore. And now it's Colin Webster, a chip forward to Williams. Harvey Williams shoots! Oh, the beautiful goal! That's a great goal. Harvey Williams there. Scored it beautifully. Ivor Old Church, oh, he's just taking his shot up then, but he likes to go through to McIntosh. Shoots! Oh, he's there! A great shot by McIntosh. I think the Swansea team were rather surprised that Old Church didn't take it, but he almost teed it up, and then McIntosh slipped fire there with a great ground shot, which Dwyer had no chance, and so it's Cardiff 4, Swansea Town 2. Cardiff putting the ball into the space and then going into the return pass to Bill, keeping possession now, notice. To Charles! A flick to Hooper. Hooper shoots. And it's there. There's number five. There's number five. The 63-64 season saw another great name arrive. John Charles signing for £25,000 from his Italian club Roma. Charles, who the club had tried to sign ten years earlier, introduced himself to the crowd by scoring a 75-yard goal against Norwich City.
George Swindon, who had taken over as manager from Bill Jones, suffered the same fate of dismissal when he was sacked in May 1964. He was succeeded by the former Portsmouth, Newcastle and Scotland wing half, Jimmy Schooler. Cardiff, having beaten Bangor City in the Welsh Cup, were to play in Europe for the first time. Their opponents in the first round of the European Cup Winners' Cup in 1964-65 were the Danish side Esbjerg. With the first leg in Denmark ending goalless, they returned to Ninian Park with high hopes. Williams out, one out to foul. Foul across King, and it's in the net, there's the first one. 11 minutes gone then in the second half and it's Cardiff that deserved to go. Peter King's goal was enough to put City through to the next round where they met the holders Sporting Lisbon. We went to Sporting Lisbon in the um, European Cup. We had no chance on paper but um, I think we defended for 89 minutes. Um, we had two shots of goals. Greg Faddle scored one. Uh, and I was fortunate to score the other one. We beat them 2-1 in Portugal. That victory over Sporting Lisbon was one of the most sensational achievements in the history of the Cup Winners' Cup. Cardiff were a lowly second division side, sporting with the cup holders and one of the giants of Europe. And they were stunned when Greg Farrell scored for City after just over half an hour. There was an even greater shot for the midway through the second half. Derek Tapscott's speculative effort completely deceived goalkeeper Cavallio to put City two up. No wonder Tapscott and his colleagues could scarcely believe it. The former Welsh international by this time nearing the end of his career, but still a danger to opposing defences. Sporting's almost constant pressure inevitably paid off, Figueredo scoring nine minutes from time, but City held on for an historic result. My goal, it was one of those games I was on the right wing. Um, I turned round from a ball from the defence. I could see this big six foot something sent the back coming at me. And I seen Bernard Lewis coming down the left wing. And I hit a great ball, which the goalkeeper um, misjudged and um, helped in the back of the net. I'd never known anything like it. When we got back at Roos Airport, there was thousands and thousands of people there. Cheering us on. After holding Lisbon to a nil-nil draw in Cardiff in the return game, the quarter-final opponents were the Spanish club Real Zaragoza. We drew two each out there, and we lost one nil on an icy pitch at Ninian Park, which I think, with a bit of luck, we could have gone and played. It was West Ham in the final that same year when West Ham won the cup. We could have been at Wembley. Cardiff went on to lift the Welsh Cup for the second year running by beating Wrexham. In the first leg at Ninian Park, Wrexham were thrashed 5-0, but went on to win their home game 1-0. Because of the points system adopted by the Welsh FA for the Welsh Cup final, it had to go to a playoff, and European football was finally assured by Cardiff winning that playoff at Shrewsbury 3-0. Following the excitement of their European exploits, the next season Cardiff were brought back down to earth with the constant fight against relegation from Division 2. But better performances were witnessed in the League Cup. Reading were beaten 5-1 at Cardiff, including a hat-trick from teenage sensation George Johnston. Another teenager to make his mark during that season was 16-year-old John Toshak, who scored on his debut against Leighton Orient. Andrews there, and header almost, but yes, and it is, and it is, as Johnson's third goal will make the score now, Cardiff 4, Reading 0. Cardiff have fallen away a little bit, they had the game completely sewn up, they've played a little bit overconfident, and I suppose it's natural if you have a lead of three goals up, but here could well be number five, and it's Andrews going forward, and Hawking shoots, it's there, there we are. Number five, scored by Kerry Harkin.